Hi, good morning. Hope you're having a great conference. I'm Ron Ledwich. I'm our worldwide partner lead for Amazon Q. And with me is Mikkel. Hey guys, I'm a principal solutions architect uh, for next generation developer experience, Amazon Q, as well as app modernization and containers. Very nice to meet you. Mikkel and I have spent the past seven months bringing Amazon Q to market. If you haven't heard of Amazon Q, it's actually a suite of generative AI assistance that we have. It's, it's actually delineated by personas. So you might have seen this kind of famous slide that we had up uh, at reInvent where we introduced a whole new stack at the very, very top. This is applications that are fully managed, that are meant to be deployed instantly and used very, very easily versus having to you know, build your own UI on top of Bedrock. What we're going to be talking about today is really Amazon Q Developer. This is a generative AI assistant that is built into the AWS console as well as the IDEs to help you develop code help you write code faster, help you modernize code, transform code. There are other variants of Q that are designed for your line of business, like Amazon Q Business for knowledge workers, and it can be trained on small pockets of information to be tailored to a legal or a marketing team. We also have Amazon Q and QuickSight, which is uh, our AI assistant inside of our QuickSight uh, analytics package that allows the democratization of big data uh, down to you know, normal day-to-day -day users like you and I. So if we talk about Amazon Q Developer for the remainder of, the, of this talk, we're going to be focusing on parts of the software development lifecycle. Amazon Q Developer is actually a very robust suite of tools. In the context of reinforce and the security conversation, we're going to be diving into the security aspects of it. But this includes functions like Code Whisperer. Now, if you heard of Code Whisperer last year, that brand is now defunct. It is now rolled into Q Developer. Code Whisperer is part of Q Developer, and that is the ability to have uh, our AI tools author code for you against best practices in 14 different languages. And it also includes capabilities like security scanning, we'll talk about code transformation, and then just general best practices. It also knows about your AWS account, your usage. So not only can you ask it about your code and how to optimize it and how to understand it, you can ask about how to integrate with AWS and get more effective usage out of it. This will make you a better developer and make your organization better at development with better customer outcomes. In terms of what we're going to be talking about today, Q Developer can be used across the entire software development lifecycle. It can plan features, it can give you back code transformations with diff files, it can help you optimize and debug code, it can help you test and secure, it can help you maintain and modernize. And a really interesting feature that we're not going to talk about here today, you should check out, is the code modernization, code transformation capability. That is the ability to use our LLMs, our AI trained systems, to automatically upgrade your legacy code bases uh, from one version of a language to another in just a handful of minutes. Today though, we're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to secure your code using uh, Amazon Q Developer and the integration we have directly in the IDE. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to Mikkel. Mikkel? Thanks. Thank you, Ron. Uh, so I'm a principal solutions architect. I'm going to focus on the technical aspects of uh, Amazon Q. And so I like to think about it as a managed Gen AI assistant for your developers, which assists you throughout the whole life cycle. So we, uh, in the past, I was a software engineer myself. In fact, I was an AWS SDE. Uh, I led engineering organizations, and I know where developer code is coming from. So third-party reference code, developer forums, copy-paste from Stack Overflow, that happens all the time, right? So uh, because of that, it's important to have, on one hand, continuous scanning for security of your code. On the other hand, to have an opportunity or an option to scan your whole code base for uh, any security vulnerabilities. And the types of uh, you know, issues that we are discovering with Amazon Q, and by the way, this security scanning feature is just one of 100 features that Amazon Q has, is standard SAST, right, static security analysis uh, for things like SQL injection, cross-site stripping, hard-coded passwords, um, issues in your infrastructure as code, database connection strings that contain certain credentials, things of that nature, of course as well as uh, you know, issues in your IC code uh, and standard code quality issues, saying, hey, this is inefficient, that it will be a suggestion for a developers to fix. And as you can see, it's going to be like shifting significantly left uh, to developers so that they can fix it before they commit. Why it is important? Let's consider the alternative. We don't do it. 
the code is committed, it goes to CI CD, maybe you have security tooling integrated at that point, but you're gonna call out something, you're gonna create an issue, it goes back to the backlog, they start planning, it's gonna take a significant cycle to accomplish whatever you want, so with Shift and Glaf, we can do it uh, ahead of that stuff, and hopefully it's gonna make your teams more uh, agile. So, and the important aspect of uh, Qt Developer is not only that it detects things, it also provides remediation controls. So you can fix things right away, uh, which is very convenient for developers, and we support uh, IDEs common like VS Code, uh, JetBrains, which is IntelliJ. We have support coming for Neo Vim if you're a Vim user. Uh, Eclipse is coming very soon as well. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, you know, definitely, I'm sure, whatever the choice of your IDE is, we're going to be covering it as well. How does it work behind the scenes? Some of you may be familiar with a product called Code Guru that we had in the past. The Code Guru came up with a, an approach called a detector library, which enables a componentized introduction of different uh, detection controls. So every control, like whether it's cloud formation or it's Java or it's Python, uh, can be integrated in that library. So effectively, we're going to be using, leveraging all that legacy from that we accumulated over, you know, several five years, more than five years, I would say, and use it for uh, the security scanning. Uh, we're going to do it in a very efficient way. We're going to take uh, uh, the the Gen AI approach, just send the list of files to the cloud first, as opposed to sending your whole code base because customers don't like it. The Gen AI tool is going to assess what are the relevant files for the security scan that we need to, to actually analyze your code, then send that in batch, uh, leverage the code guru's uh, detector library, give the result back to you with remediation controls in place. Uh, here is a demo, it's an actual code base. Uh, it's actually my code base that I, I, I'm using to just prototype with Q and see how effective it is. Um, this one is specifically calling out how to run a security scanning. Let me start it. So in this case, I, I have a, a code base that is somewhat unfamiliar to me. I want to run a security scan from the get-go. You can see there is also auto suggestions enabled continuously, but I can I select scan the whole project. It detects certain things. Out of 200-something, uh, three major issues are detected. You can see the whole list of scanned files if you are you know, interested what was scanned. And uh, for each of those things, you can select the remediation control and apply those remediation control right away at the point of we, uh, when, when we detect them. You can also show infos. You're going to see 200-something suggestions um, for things that are less relevant, including spelling errors, things like that. In this case, uh, the, it's a missing authentication for a critical function. Uh, we, we can either add authentication or we can make it less critical from the uh, function perspective. That's the uh, remediation that we select, we apply it, it's done at that point. Uh, right. Now, let's review your developer lifecycle. Where does the Qt Developer fit within your software development lifecycle? As you can see, there is a significant emphasis to shifting left so when developers write code, we're going to be detecting security and quality issues for, and remediation. Then there will be build, test, deploy. It's not covered yet. In the past, Code Guru, for instance, was able to also detect your performance issues from the production code. That functionality hasn't been implemented yet, but it's coming. Now, all the way we shift to the right, how do we improve that code? The improvement at this point is, of course, we're going to be training Qt Developer continuously on the code bases that we are aware of. We're not using customer code to train it. We're using our internal code bases as well as publicly available, uh, like GitHub, for instance. But you can always create customizations if you see similar issues coming up over and over again in your security analysis. You can create customizations for Qt Developer with the libraries that you use, proprietary libraries, connect it and make it part of your security scanning and make it part of your uh, suggestions and whatever Qt Developer is good for. Now, of course, with, as with everything, there are some limits. I, I wanted to cover it with you so that you are aware. Uh, there is a maximum input artifact size and maximum source code size uh, that can be uploaded for auto scans and for the whole project scans. Now, the difference between input artifact size and source code size is that source code is just the source code that is of a particular type, Java file, TypeScript, Python file. That's the source code. Your code base may contain gigabytes of video information and other irrelevant things. That 
applies to the input artifact size. So your input artifact, so your code base, if it's 500 megs, is going to scale scan the whole thing in a single shot. And the same goes for the source code. We support a number of programming languages. Um, if something that you are using is not here, please let us know. We will definitely uh, schedule something uh, for that support. Uh, Java, Java 17, JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, Go, Ruby. Uh, we have some support for Rust as well. If you don't see it, you know, give it a shot. But it's not necessarily going to be supported for scanning. These are just the programming languages that we support security scans on. Uh, we also support Terraform. A lot of you probably are using Terraform to, for infrastructure as code. And we have very good partnership with HashiCore. So when, whenever changes happen on both ends, we train our models and fine tune it to produce the best results possible. Um, and uh, CDK as well. We do have automatic code fixes for some of them. That means remediation controls will be available along with the detection controls for the languages uh, that I listed. Now, Amazon Q Developer has a free tier. Uh, and I mentioned that it is a managed Gen AI assistant for your development teams. And managed Gen AI assistants, the beauty of that, it's, it's extremely low barrier to enter. So you can just pay $19 for a pro version and get started with a small POC. It's going to be peanuts compared to, let's say, roll out uh, some sort of a compute infrastructure to run a foundation model, to run an LLM by yourself and make it happen, including Bedrock. It's going to be significantly cheaper compared to Bedrock uh, for uh, developer use cases. But with free tier, which you can start immediately, there are limits. There are 50 security scans per month that you are allowed to. I don't know how many security scans uh, you guys generally do. Uh, 50 per month seems quite, quite a bit. You can be doing a couple a day. Um, so if you have a lot of code bases, you may run out of that. That's why you have 500 with uh, Protier, uh, which uh, can probably cover any possible use case observable. Uh, with the uh, uh, ID plugins that we have, so we have those plugins for IntelliJ, we have those plugins for uh, VS Code. You can get started uh, right away. You can basically just open up your ID and uh, select the extension. If it's VS Code, you can just type in Amazon Q. Um, uh, developer, uh, get that extension plugin. There is an option to register for free. Uh, you can basically select continue uh, as a free, uh, get your builder ID. And with that builder ID, you will be uh, eligible for the free tier support, uh, which uh, includes certain limits. And if when you're ready, you can go ahead and move on to the pro tier just with a $90 license. Let's say you have a development shop that is uh, 10 developers. Uh, it's going to be fairly low barrier to enter, and you can use it for prototyping. That enables you features outside of the security scanning and uh, different limits on the upload artifact size. It has um, uh, significantly better support for um, in integration of an identity center. Uh, it, it, it has better support for you, you. You will be able to use those customizations that I mentioned, like if you have proprietary code bases, libraries that you generally use uh, with in your development process, including security related. You will be able to plug them in. Um, and with that, uh, I would like to switch to any questions. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, go ahead. I have. We have a few minutes left. I will definitely be happy to answer anything. So uh, we have a booth over here. This is all the worldwide partner leads. Uh, you can come over to the uh, developer application security. This is the end of our talk. Thank you very much for coming. And feel free to come ask us questions. Thanks. Yes, thank you.